Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Jets 2021-2022 season recap. This is episode three and the last one with the games. The next episode will be the statistics review. But anyways, last episode ended off with a win versus the Texans. Zach Wilson returns. The Jets start week 13 versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Jets have actually never won a game versus the Philadelphia Eagles in our history, but Braxton Berrios goes for over 80 yards on the return. But the shriek would continue this game. You know, we really had a, we really did well in the first half scoring. Elijah Moore gets a touchdown. Our new kicker shanks two extra points. But for the Eagles, our main problem was guarding tight ends uh, this week. I mean, our linebackers couldn't really cover him because they, they, he was too big, and then the safeties weren't able to defend really anyone on the on the Eagles this game. But overall, Zach Wilson played exceptionally well for the first time in a while. Zach Wilson scores a rushing touchdown here. And then, of course, kicker mix again. And uh, I don't think he never kicked again for the team. He got cut mainly the next day. Again, Dallas Goddard with another touchdown for the Eagles. Back on offense, Zach Wilson and the Jets were unable to score on third and uh, third and goal because Elijah Moore did drop that one. I felt like he could have got that. And then Ryan Griffin goes into the end zone for the touchdown on fourth and goal. So the game started off super competitive. Of course, the Jets cannot kick again. Kicker missed twice, missed the two point, and then Kenneth Gainwell goes into the end zone because of the run defense. Um, starting to become a massive problem at this point in the year. And the Philadelphia Eagles just get a bunch of field goals. I'm pretty sure they got four field goals in a row for them. And then that was really the game. In the second half, the Jets could not do anything on offense. Uh, the offensive line was starting to break down. And one main important key is that Corey Davis would be out for the year after this game. So Zach Wilson's weapons started to dwindle. Going over the stats of this game, Gardner Minshew, 20 for 25, 242 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Really good game from him, uh, uh, starting for Jalen Hurts, who ended up getting hurt in the day before. Zach Wilson had a pretty good game as well, 23 for 38, 226 yards, two touchdowns, but he did have one interception. Tevin Coleman, 11 for 58. He actually had a pretty decent game. And then... Uh, Michael Carter was out for this game. Zach Wilson with a rushing touchdown. For the Eagles on the ground, Miles Sanders, 24 for 120 yards. Kenneth Gainwell, 12 for 54, and a touchdown. Of course, the run defense yet again led up almost 200 yards on the ground. In the air, Elijah Moore had a touchdown, 6 for 77. James Crowder, 4 for, 60, uh, 4 for 62. And then Ryan Griffin with a touchdown. For the Eagles, Dallas Goddard, 6 for 105. Tight ends continue to be a, a big problem for the Jets, it seems like, over the past couple of years, actually, with two touchdowns. Quiz Watkins, 3 for 60. But Devontae Smith got held for only 2 for 15 yards, which was quite impressive for Bryce Hall. And on the defense, C.J. Mosley was our leading tackler. Elijah Riley had a sack. And other than that, no other defensive stats for them. Uh, Marcus Epps with an interception and Josh Sweat with one and a half sacks and, and uh, Javon Hargrave with the other half sack. Overall, this game uh, was a fun first half game to watch, but overall kind of a disappointing game that we definitely could have won. This would also be Elijah Moore's last week of the season. Ended up going on IR and never returning. So we finished the season with only 10 games. Zach Wilson did go on to win Rookie of the Week for the second time, but it did come with some drawbacks due to Corey Davis being now out for the season. Week 14 starts against the Saints. Now the Saints were pretty battered at quarterback, having to start Taysom Hill. But at the same time, Jets could not get anything on offense. But the defense did play kind of well until the end of the game. We ended up getting a few sacks in there. But uh, our new kicker, Eddie Pinheiro, went 3-for-3 three three from field, uh, for field goal attempts, which was a final positive sight. But the run defense was still a massive problem. We ended up giving up every single touchdown, I'm pretty sure, 
on the ground. Now, Zach Wilson definitely struggled in this game. His um, his weapons really started to dwindle at this point. I'm pretty sure Michael Carter was out again this game. So this game ended up being kind of a boring game. The, the offense was just stalling out on almost every single drive. And then the Saints, Saints weren't having too much luck with every single drive. So this, so this game was kind of one of the ones was kind of similar to the New England Patriots game the first week where just couldn't get anything going. Taysom Hill on the ground pretty got two touchdowns. So the Jets I mean the Jets run defense wasn't it was not good at all. One massive storyline that started to to start in the NFL was COVID, but at this point the Jets did not have that many COVID people Going out. over the stats, Taysom Hill had uh just well, whatever game in the air, 15 for 21, 175 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Zach Wilson, 19 for 42, really tough day in the air. The Saints defense is one of the more elite defenses in the NFL, over 200 yards though, but importantly, no picks. This was the start of his no, the no pick era, Zach Wilson. On the ground, Alvin Kamara, 27 for 120 yards and a touchdown. Taysom Hill, 11 for 73 and two touchdowns on the ground. Of course, the run defense at this point in the season was soft. Uh, Zach Wilson, 4 for 33 on the ground. Len Michael Piran, 7 for 28. Ty Johnson, 6 for 17. We had like no running backs, running backs at this point of the season. Uh, in the air for them, 3 for 44. For Nick Vanett, uh, Marcus Callaway, 2 for 34, and they didn't really have anything in the air. And then for us, Braxton Berrios was our leading receiver, 6 for 52, Ty Johnson, 4 for 40, DJ Montgomery, 3 for 36. I mean, the guys he's throwing to aren't household names necessarily. And then for defense, they got two sacks with Quan Alexander, one with Carl Granderson, no picks. And then for us, Kyle Phillips had a pick. Ashton Davis, Shaq Lawson shared a sack. And that would do it for week 14. In the week 15 matchup versus the Dolphins, Zach Wilson's weapons were almost non-existent at this point. We had Braxton Berrios as our leading receiver for the most of the time. And Braxton Berrios is a really good player, but he lost Elijah Moore and he lost Corey Davis, but we did get Michael Carter and Tevin Coleman back. But we start this game off super well with a touchdown from Braxton Berrios and then an interception from Ashton Davis. So at this point, we're thinking that we could maybe uh, stop Miami from potentially a playoff spot. Zach Wilson's looking pretty good, but we do. We're unable to convert on third and seven, so we have to settle for the field goal. Eddie Pinheiro at this point was almost automatic from within 40 which is a really good sign because we struggled m massively with kickers at this point ashton davis almost had an interception there but the dolphins do answer with a touchdown from duke johnson duke johnson had an an excellent game because the run, our run defense makes everybody look good a little trickery here uh, zach wilson escapes like three defenders and then manages to throw off balance to Ryan Griffin, who not only gets the first down, but he gets plus 20 yards. Michael Floor starting in his bag. Tevin Coleman just seemingly can't find the end zone. He ended up uh, with zero touchdowns this season, but Zach Wilson does run in there for the second straight week with a goal line touchdown. Miami fails to convert on third and goal, so... The Jets escape with only letting up a field goal going within two minutes up seven. Now this is one of the most fun plays of the year. This is football IQ to the max. Jamison Crowder throws it to Braxton Berrios behind um, behind where he is as a backwards as a lateral pass and he goes for over 20 yards but Duke Johnson once again goes into the end zone. Jets cannot manage to stop their run. Zach Wilson massively pressured, but is able to get able to evade four sacks and still gets the first down, showing why he was the number two overall pick. On fourth and inches, Jacoby Brissett goes in there on a crucial fourth and inches. If they don't get this, the Jets have a, have 
a chance to just go back on offensive score. Christian Wilkins ends up getting this touchdown on the uh, rollout pass. The Jets on the next drive end up getting the Dolphins end up getting a strip sack. Zach Wilson and the Jets end up turning over the ball on fourth and one. The Jets or the Dolphins try to fake the punt, but the Jets end up stopping them off of a bad snap. Brandon Eccles then gets the first and only pick six of the year. Remember, this guy's a six-round pick. And now at this point, the Jets are back in it. It is 24 to 24. But Miles Gaskin breaks off for a plus 30-yard run. Of course, the run defense sells us this game. Absolutely abysmal run defense. Duke Johnson was looking like prime AP, unable to get tackled. He did fumble, but the, the Dolphins then recovered. And then Devontae Parker goes in there for the touchdown. And that ends up being the dagger. The Jets do not respond. And that ends up being the game 31-24. to The Jets lose their second bout versus the Miami Dolphins. Better score this time than the last time. Zach Wilson, 13 for 20, 370 yards. Zero, tu zero touchdowns in the air, but also zero interceptions. Uh, it was a decent game for Zach Wilson. We really didn't. We didn't really have the ball that much this game. They, the Dolphins really dominate, dominated time of possession for Tua Tungavailoa. He had two interceptions this game, 16 for 27, 196 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And then for us on the ground, Tevin Coleman, 8 for 50, 6.2 on average. He had a pretty good game. Michael Carter did not have a good game at all. 8 for 18 coming off of injury. Zach Wilson, 4 for 12 with a touchdown. Braxton Berrios also had a touchdown on the ground. For them, Duke Johnson, 22 for 107 yards and two touchdowns. Miles Gaskin, 10 for 54 and no touchdowns. Us on the air, Jameson Crowder, 5 for 40. Ryan Griffin, 2 for, 30, for, two for 39. T uh, Tyler Croft, 2 for 35. And Braxton Berrios had that one awesome trick play, one for 26. For them, Devontae Parker, uh, four for 68 and a touchdown. Isaiah Ford, three for 51. Miles Gaskin, five for 43. We did a better uh, job covering tight ends this game, but then the run defense definitely sold us. Uh, Christian Wilkinson with that last touchdown. On the defense, C.J. Mosley, our leading tackler, Ashton Davis and Brandon Eccles both got interceptions. Sheldon Rankins with a sack. And then for them, Jerome Baker had two, ended up with two sacks. Brandon Jones with a sack. Andrew Van Ginkle with a sack. Zach Sailder with a sack. And Emmanuel Ogbo with a sack. Pressure got in there almost instantly. The Jets offensive line did not play good this game. Definitely, definitely a winnable, a winnable game that the Jets ended up selling. Uh, I'm blaming the run defense on that one. Brandon Eccles did end up winning Rookie of the Week for Week 15, winning it because of his pick six. Big shout out to Jets Twitter for that one. Arguably, the Jets face the worst team in the league at this point. The Jacksonville Jaguars 2-18. and Jets get a crucial stop on third down, but the Jet this game really became known as a COVID game. The Jets had 20 players out with COVID, including uh, Coach Robert Sala. So Ron Middleton had to take over this game. Zach Wilson with a 52-yard run. Absolutely excellent. Uh, Jags block the extra point, though. But the Jags did have some notable players out as well, like Josh Allen and Miles Jack. So their team wasn't at full capacity anyways. But we were more battered than them. The Jets or the Jets allow a touchdown. An unlucky one. Trevor Lawrence fumbles it into the end zone. They failed the two point. But then Braxton Berrios goes for his first touchdown return of the year, going 103 yards as being and the Pro Bowl roster was announced the week before, and he was obviously one of the biggest snubs. Now, this game was an excellent game on the ground. The Jets had over 270 yards on the ground, uh, in part to Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson getting the most rushing yards of his career, and Michael Carter as well, having over 100 yards for the first time. The Jets 
fail on fourth and goal on this play. One of the biggest problems of this game was leaving points on the board. There were around three red zone trips that we did not get due to us going for it on fourth down. Uh, the Jets do decide to take points on our first drive into the, the second half. One important thing to mention in this game was James Robinson did end up leaving the game with a torn Achilles. CJ Mosley with the A-gap blitz goes in there and strip sacks Trevor Lawrence. And then third and three, Zach Wilson is stopped. And the Jets fake the field goal, which I strongly disagree with. Braden Mann uh, is one yard short, and then he gets absolutely rocked. But then the Jags answer back with a field goal. It is 15-16, but on third and goal, Michael Carter just gets just gets stuffed so close to the end zone. And then on fourth and goal, Zach Wilson rolls out and manages to find Connor McDermott, the third string left tackle, for the touchdown. And then the Jets go up by eight. The Jags on their next drive, uh, De Deo Oding Odeingbo goes in there for the touchdown, and then they end up failing their two-point attempt as the defense gets in there for the interior pressure. On third and nine, Zach Wilson throws an absolute rope to Braxton Berrios, who catches it through contact. Braxton Berrios really isn't a guy who drops balls. And then Michael Carter goes for a 40-yard run, one of the biggest of his young career. And the rushing yards just continue to pile up. But on third and goal, the Jets are stopped. And they eventually have to go for field goal. Tyler Croft is just one yard short. And our new kicker, Eddie Pinheiro, has been really consistent throughout the last couple of games. But then on their drive, with one minute left, Trevor Lawrence does go for around 20 yards on that rush. And on fourth and goal, the Jets get a defensive stop to close out the game. There is a flag, though, but that flag ended up being an illegal shift on the Jaguars. The Jets beat we the Jaguars 26 and we end 21 up escaping in with week a win. 16. Zach Wilson had an exceptional game on the ground, and not much on the, in the air, though. Finishes with 14 out of tw uh, 14. 22 100 only 102 yards in the air he had a touchdown though as well and then trevor lawrence had one of his best games of the season that's saying something but 26 for 39 280 yards no touchdowns no picks uh in the on the ground for us we uh, we were spectacular six michael carter 16 for 118 7.4 on average and he almost got a receiving touchdown zach wilson four for 91 with that 52 yard run and a touchdown tevin coleman 14 for 59 4.1 on average for them De uh dare ode odingbao or was with, with 17 for 59 and a touchdown trevor lawrence six for 37 tevin austin three for 21 in the air for us, Braxton Berrios, our leading receiver, five receptions, 39 yards. Tyler Croft, three for 29. Keelan Cole, two for 25. And Connor McDermott had a touchdown. For them, Marvin Jones, eight for 74. Tivon Austin, six for 68. Uh, Laquan Treadwell, five, four for 54. And James O'Shaughnessy with four for 49. On defense for us, C.J. Mosley was our leading tackler and had a strip sack, and then nobody else really had anything notable. And then for the for the Jaguars, they had one sack with the Jaheed Ward, and that would also close out this game. One important stat is that the Jets had 273 rushing yards on the day, and Zach Wilson one rookie of the week for the third time. Braxton Berrios was the off AFC special team player of the week for his uh, 101 yard return touchdown. And we close out week 16 with a quality win for the team versus the Jags. After the Jets pull out a win versus the Jaguars, this game ended in a massive disappointment for the fans that really wanted to win this game. Michael Carter busts off for a 50-plus yard run. Definitely could have gotten into the end zone there. 
Braxton Berrios on the end around goes in there for the touchdown. Braxton Berrios proving why he should be on the top of the Jets extension list. But Tom Brady goes right back and they score a touchdown. Mike Evans kind of mosses um, Bryce Hall. One positive factor to take from this game is that Zach Wilson played very well. Probably his best game as a Jet. He was throwing it into tight coverages the whole game. He was very smart with the ball, not throwing interceptions to a very good defense. And he looked he looked comparable to Tom Brady almost as they were kind of going blow for blow. Uh, the Bucks do have to settle for a field goal. The Jets' defense was looking really good until the fourth quarter of this game and the offense of course has been looking better uh, ever since Zach Wilson has been back at the helm Michael LaFleur with Michael Floor had a really good game too Daniel Brown tried to hurdle that guy and that ended up getting him hurt but on uh second and 10 late into the second quarter Brandon Eccles gets an interception, and actually got that ball signed uh, at the end of the game, which stirred a little controversy, unneeded. But the Jets go into half 17-10. to 10. Super competitive game at this point. This was on all the news is that the Jets were almost going to pull up an upset. Zach Wilson, a roped pass to Keelan Cole, who's got to try to get into the end zone there. And then on second and goal, Zach Wilson hands it off to Ty Johnson, who gets in there for the touchdown after getting a little push at the end. And at this point, Antonio Brown has his iconic meltdown on the sidelines. There are a ton of factors why he ended up leaving this game. There were some contract disputes. There were injury disputes. Foul play on uh, the Bucks side and Antonio Brown side. Overall, just a weird, weird scenario. It was fun to watch, and a lot of stuff is, stuff is still coming out of it. But I hope Antonio Brown gets the help he needs and he recovers from whatever is going wrong, whether it's something mental or physical. But then Tom Brady uh, throws to Cameron Bray on the inside leverage against Michael Carter. That was the first touchdown actually allowed by Michael Carter the entire season. And then on the next drive at 3rd and 8, they fail to get the touchdown. Tyler Johnson drops that pass, and then they end up kicking the field goal 20-24 to game. This was an important play because Braxton Berrios definitely had a touchdown if he didn't get tripped up by Winfield. You can see the reaction. The Jets on 3rd and 6 fail to convert with two yards and then of course Zach Wilson is unable to get those two yards and Tom Brady goes back on offense and he eventually comes back throws it to Grayson on this 10 yard play Bryce Hall with an excellent tackle to keep him in and bounds but I feel like the Jets should have called a timeout to get their safeties who are obviously gassed uh, just a little bit of rest, and Grayson goes immediately back to score the touchdown, and the game ends with the Bucks winning. The Jets almost pull out a win in their final home game of the year versus the Buccaneers, but Zach Wilson goes 19 for 33, 234 yards and a touchdown. Very good game from Zach Wilson. Tom Brady, of course, has another massive game, 34 for 50, 410 yards, three touchdowns, but one interception. That was Brandon Eccles on the ground. Michael Carter, 5 for 54. He ended up leaving this game with a concussion. Austin Walter, 14 for 49. Ty Johnson had a touchdown on the ground, and so did Braxton Berrios. For them, Keyshawn Vaughn, 8 for 31. Uh, Ronald Jones, 10 for 26. Le'Veon Bell got a few carries. The Jets' run defense was actually very good this game. Braxton Berrios, 8 for 65 and a touchdown. Excellent game. Uh, should hopefully get a another contract to stay on the Jets. Ty Johnson, 3 for 47. Kenny Yaboa, 2 for 36. And yet again, another game without a Denzel Mims reception. For uh, Rob Gronkowski, tight ends continue to be a problem. 7 for 115. Cyril Grayson got that final touchdown, 6 for 81. Tyler Johnson, 4 for 50. Mike Evans had a touchdown as well, 4 for 47. Prashad Perriman, 2 for 41, 
X Jet, Antonio Brown ended up leaving the game early, and then Cameron Brait had a touchdown as well. On defense, C.J. Mosley was our leading tackler yet again. Michael Carter II got his first sack ever. Brandon Eccles also then had an interception. For the Buccaneers, Ant- Antoine Winfield had that game-saving tackle for Braxton Berrios. Anthony Nelson had a sack, and that would conclude Week 17 with the last game of the season coming up next. The Jets faced the Bills in the last game of the season, and it ended up being quite an uneventful game due to the weather. Not many key things happened in this game. The Jets' run defense was once again... Uh, kind of destroyed as Josh Allen and the Bills do come away with the win. Josh Allen throws a touchdown uh, so close to being incomplete. Josh Allen just manages to keep the strength to stay in bounds, and Stephon Diggs gets two feet down. Late into the second quarter on fourth and five, Zach Wilson throws an absolute dime to Keelan Cole on the slant route, and Keelan Cole goes all the way for his first touchdown of the year. And Zach Wilson gets his first touchdown of the game. The Bills, uh, manage, or the, the defense manages to stop the Bills really late into the game. But the Bills have to settle for three. And they go into half up 13-7 to seven over the Jets. Punting was a massive issue for the Bills this game. I'm pretty sure they had four either whiffed punts or punts that were that had a net of like 30 yards. Special teams was a massive issue for them this game, and the cold really didn't help this punter. And then one of the major issues with uh, this game was the pressure got in there way too fast, and the receivers just could not get open this game. Zach Wilson also had a hard time gripping the ball, but Zach Wilson makes a mental error by going out of bounds here, making Eddie Pinheiro have to kick a 49-yard kick, which he drills, though. He finishes the year nine, perf- a perfect 9-for-9 nine nine on uh, field goals. The Bills back on offense are forced to make a massive play and Dawson Knox delivers, mossing Michael Carter the second, And that play really felt like the dagger because after that massive chunk play, the defense started to get more tired and the rushing game of the Buffalo Bills started to start. The pressure just kept on getting in there way too fast. I mean, the Jets were left with their backup offensive lineman the whole game. Morgan Moses ended up getting hurt with a knee injury. Devin Singletary goes in there for his second touchdown of the game, and that would be the dagger in the game. The Bills ended up winning the AFC East for the second time in a row. Going over stats for the final time of the year, Zach Wilson finished 7 for 20, 87 yards, and a touchdown. No interceptions, his fifth straight game without one. But overall, he was throwing to his 5th, 6th, and 7th receiver and going up against the Bills defense. Overall, he definitely struggled, but he 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 didn't do as bad as maybe some people thought. And for the Bills, Josh Allen, 24 for 45, was struggling a bit. 239 yards, two touchdowns. Mitch Trubisky went in there for garbage time. On the ground, Zach Wilson was actually our leading rusher with 2 for 24. Michael Carter had a terrible game, 9 for 19. Tevin Coleman, a terrible game, 5 for 6. Uh, five for six. Ty Johnson, 1 for negative 1. The Bills' run defense was all over us today. And then for the Bills, Devin Singletary, 19 for 88 and a touchdown. Josh Allen, 5 for 63, 12.6 an average overall pretty bad game for the Jets defense up or late into the game just they kept on getting tired we did really well against the pass I felt but then later in the game they just got super tired in the air Keelan Cole three for 54 and that one touchdown Jamison Crowder one for 16 uh, Tariq Black one for 10 Tyler Craft one for five not much there. Stephon Diggs, once again, a massive problem for this team. 9 for 81 and a touchdown. Dawson Knox, 3 for 49 with that one massive catch. Gabriel Davis, 3 for 39. Cole Beasley, 4 for 31. Devin Singletary, touchdown in the air. I felt like the Jets' defense was able to hone in on their backup players, more or less than Stephon Diggs. Brand, uh, Brandon Eccles was on him most of the game. CJ Mosley finished with 12 total tackle or with 12 total or 13 total tackles 12 of them he got himself no pressure at all and no interceptions 
the Jets, and then for them, they ended up getting nine sacks this game. Gree Russo was their leading tackler. Mario Addison and Jordan Poyer both got two sacks. Matt Milano with a sack. Ed Oliver with one and a half. AJ Epinesa with one. Carl, um, Carlos Basham with one. And Jerry Hughes with a half sack. And just to highlight, their their punter was absolutely terrible. Matt Hack was uh, not ha- not having a great game. And that will conclude the 2021-2022 season. A lot better than last year when we won two wins, but four wins isn't that great either. Overall, I think we have some potential and we're going in the right way. And if we just limit injuries and we keep on getting better, Zach Wills keeps on improving, then we could have a chance to maybe turn this ship around. Next video will be the statistics reviews and the final statistics and rankings and position uh, grades. But thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts about this season in the comments. And make sure you subscribe.